What's up, weirdo? She Tree Surgeon here at the homestead in the garage with the Bangkok banner, the mail order glide, the incredible bulk, fully loaded up and prepared for a seven day journey across this country to God knows where. What are we searching for? We don't know. And we have even less idea what we'd do with it if we did manage to find it. But it's the searching that's the fun, ain't it? Let's go on an adventure. Like all great adventures that start out underneath the quiet stillness in the dark, warm embrace of the Florida night. Our journey not only will, it must start with a stop at the good old stab and grab, boys. Voted Florida's most interesting gas station. Five years running. Nothing but the finest. <laughs> Should probably put a condom on this. Let's hit the road, baby. The search begins. Adventure starting out with my phone refusing to load either maps or play music. <laughs> not sure why, why that that's happening, but uh, let's hit the road and see if it decides to do it later. Leaving underneath the purple lights of Ybor City and Seminole Heights for parts unknown. Oh, blaze of glory, ta taking me out of Tampa? Baby, I'll take it. Going up the ramp, hitting ram in speed, it feels like I'm taking off, baby. Blaze of glory, let's do it. Oh my God, nothing feels better than hitting the road knowing that you're going right past that last exit and not looking back. Exit 53, Bears, see you later, Tampa. This is the last stop on the line. We blowing right past it. Rolling past Bears like thunder. Well, not really like thunder, more like a microwave on defrost. But damn it, we're rolling past Bears, okay? We're rolling past it with bells on in search of fame, fortune, glory, and adventure. Florida nights, these Florida nights, it feels so good. There's one fly in the ointment, of course. I'm very sad that Shay Lisi isn't with me right now, but she was in a pretty bad motorcycle accident. Being freshly concussed is not exactly conducive to iron butt motorcycle rides. But as for me, the mystery of this dark highway awaits. Right, right at 97 miles. A little sooner than I want to stop. You know, guy, I'd like to do right around 100, but more like 120, 130. But <laughs> there's something uh, a little wrong with the bike. I, I feel like I felt something let go in the front suspension, and uh, I will tell you, it feels a little bit like a pogo stick right now. Not like I'm going to be able to do anything like fix suspension on the side of the road at a pilot gas station, but I'll take a look and see what's going on. Oh yeah, it's just like every little thing it's bottoming out over. I pretty feel like I've pretty much gotten no front suspension right now. Well, the fork seals aren't leaking, which makes me think that probably the air, the air ride let go in it. I have no idea. Pretty sure that the air suspension in the front has completely let go, although we're not really sure. So now the front end feels like a pogo stick that bottoms out over anything thicker than a dime and it goes into a violent death wobble at anything over 90 miles an hour. But there's good news. The good news is, is the death wobble kind of clears up over 100. Let's hit the road. I've gone farther on sketchier bikes. Right here on the Florida Georgia line, had to stop for one last glizzy in the wang of America. It just hit a little bit different here. Delicious. All right, let's rock and roll. There is a uh, very, uh, very strange things afoot. There are deals getting made in the Love's parking lot on the Florida Georgia line, baby. I don't know what kind of deals they are, but uh, actually, that's a lie. I know exactly what kind of deals they are. I just ain't no narc. Let's rock and roll, baby. Mm, speaking of, <laughs> as the fuzz shows up, let's exit stage left. Baby, autograph, take me over the line. Let's escape the wang. Bustin' loose, escape the wang under cover of the night. We're blowing into Georgia 90 mile an hour on a motorcycle that's 34 years old that I paid $1,500 for and the suspension just gave out. It's basically a low rider hardtail now, boys and girls. Let's do it to it. What's the worst that could happen? The sketchier the bike, the more exciting the adventure. All right, got a low fuel light on as ACDC sings us into Macon, man. And normally I wouldn't be super worried about that because I keep an extra bottle of fuel on the bike. If you guys watched my setup video for how I take my trips, you'll have seen that, but uh, the past three gas stops, I have neglected to fill it up, so <laughs> fingers crossed, baby. Can, can we make it to the Buckies? Oh, no. Come on. We're so close. 
I just went to accelerate and I felt a, a a pretty nasty stutter. Come on, baby, you can do it. Come on, I am not pretty enough to hitchhike. I wouldn't pick me up, I look terrifying. <laughs> I would have to walk to Bucky's, come on. We're so close. Come on, I don't wanna have to push it. Oh my God, oh, oh, we're dying, we're, <laughs> we're dying here. Oh, holy crap, talk about getting here on fumes, baby. Phew, that would have sucked. Just made it, man. 162 miles? Man, that seems kind of lame for a gold wing. Of course, I already know that this thing does not run right. It uh, gets pretty bad gas mileage. There's something wrong with it. I just never bothered to figure out what was wrong with it because it's never stopped it from going. Okay, according to my beep boop beep, beep calculations, I'm getting about 31 miles to the gallon. Honestly, I don't know what a gold wing's supposed to get. That's one of those questions. If you ask it online, everyone's got a different answer and they will go to war and die on that hill. I know there's just like the church of Bucky's, but I really don't get it to be totally honest with you. Of course, the only other time I've been here was on my FXR when I was heading to the mountains. I was freezing my ass off and I was like, oh my gosh, Bucky's, I've never been here. And I tried to come in because I thought they'd have a place to sit down and eat where I could be warm for a minute. Not the case at all. You cannot sit down and eat inside. Ever since then, I'm like, look at the freaking size of this place and they don't have a place to sit down and eat your food. Now that's freaking ridiculous. Okay, let's hit the road. Normally this is where I'd get off and go around Atlanta. Throwing caution to the wind today. We're driving right through it. Yeah, the normal course of action is to avoid Atlanta at all costs. But the way I planned it out, we should be rolling through Atlanta right around uh, 3.30 in the morning. So uh, let's see how bad it is at 3.30 in the morning. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll still regret it. I have no idea. Only one way to find out. Well, look Looks like I might have made a mistake. I'm <laughs> just rolling right into Atlanta and uh, traffic is stopped. Damn, even at 3 a.m.? Like the sea. <laughs> Come on, man. Literally stopping on the highway at 3 o'clock in the morning? That's wild. Man, I don't even think I'm in Atlanta yet. I'm just like close to Atlanta and it's already stopped. Holy mackerel. Atlanta. Not even once. What do the lines on the road even mean? There's like six lines for six lanes, but there's only room for three lanes. What's going on here? Oh, no wonder you can't drive through it at night either. During the day, it's so congested because it's not big enough, and at night, it's congested because they're trying to make it bigger. Okay, now I'm actually in Atlanta. Uh, the traffic's a lot better. I guess it is pretty normal at three o'clock in the morning. Besides that road work, I still feel good about going through Atlanta. It probably only took about 15 minutes to get through the road work, and so far, so good in Atlanta traffic. There's more cars than you would expect at 3 o'clock in the morning, but still easy to get through. As my bike, like, stutters going up this hill. can only imagine what this place looks like during the day, during 5 o'clock traffic, though. I'm sure it's absolutely freaking wild. <laughs> this thing is really running badly. You have to just roll on the throttle so gently. Like, if you try to crack it open at all, it just falls directly on its face. I wonder if it's got a clogged... Uh, clock power jet or something on top of everything else i mean it still accelerates once you get going does this carburetor even have power jets i don't even know you ever are traveling down the highway and there's just one of those dudes who's like traveling exactly the same speed as you <laughs> and he has his brights on and he always wants to be like near you while you're while you're driving it's like dude just drive faster than me or drive slower than me just stay the hell stay the hell away from me all right well, let's rock and roll I took the camera off for a couple gas stops because i was this jet black highway with not a lot going on except for me concentrating and not wrecking in this fog somewhere in alabama if you couldn't tell from the rash of lifted dodge rams yeah somewhere in alabama all the dodge trucks in alabama are lifted with mud on the side all the all the lifted trucks in tampa are lifted with rims on them and, st and stereo systems okay the sun's finally starting to come up it feels like it took for freaking ever because of the time change and man i hope it burns off this fog quick out here in the sticks there ain't a whole lot of street like yet i can see a lot better now but before back a little while ago man there was just like no street lights nothing going on couldn't see which way the road was going thick as soup but out of it now baby it's an adventure i mean don't get me wrong i'm glad i got through this early because i wanted to ride through the night and just get the first part of the journey over with but i'm oh as we roll right into some really deep fog wow <laughs> i am a little bummed out that i'm riding through alabama not only in the fog but also in the 
the dark. I've ridden through Alabama before, and I, let me tell you, Alabama is one of the most beautiful states I've ever been in. I think of all the states I've been in, I haven't been to all of them, I would say only second to West Virginia, of the ones that I've been to anyway. The advice I have for rain is the same advice I have for fog. Just go as fast as possible, because the more time you spend in the fog, the more danger you're in, because it's a dangerous place to be, just like the rain. So the faster you go, the less time you're in it, therefore, beep, boop, 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 beep, less danger, right? All right, let's hit it. Ah, it just makes the whole place look gorgeous, doesn't it? But, you know, beauty and danger are uh, intimate bedfellows. There's rarely a beautiful thing that's not made more beautiful by it being dangerous as well. Once again, just ask all my ex-girlfriends. I don't know if this is gonna show up on the GoPro or not, boys. I am glad I freaking caught the first light while I was still in Alabama with this fog rolling through the hills. Absolutely beautiful. What a, what a gorgeous state. I'm always revitalized at first light because, man, I'll tell you, I love getting that first part of the journey out of the way, leaving the wang of America, escaping the wang under cover of the night. But then once the sun comes up and reveals a landscape so different from the one I left, and I didn't get to see it until now, so it's almost just like this shock to the system, these rolling hills, these trees, this fog. Ah, oh, makes me love it that much more. Yes, this terrain is looking very, very familiar because I spent many hours on the side of the road somewhere just like this in Alabama trying to change the rear tube on the tire of my XS650 chopper. Well, look at it. Worst places to spend a few hours on the side of the road, I'll tell you. Almost noticing I'm, uh, I'm about to lose my tent. That would suck. <laughs> or find somewhere to pull over and re-secure that thing. Is I'm not used to traveling with a whole bunch of camping equipment on this bike. So uh, we're, we're learning as we go. Hopefully the lesson doesn't involve having to buy another tent at Walmart before I find an exit. Well, that's all she wrote for Alabama. Mississippi, here we come, baby. Looks a lot like Alabama at first blush. <laughs> This is the first time I've been in this part of Mississippi. Usually when I roll through Mississippi, I'm way down south and it looks a, a lot like Louisiana. And then up here, it looks a lot like Alabama. Guess that makes sense. All right, we got the Mississippi Welcome Center. I can re-secure my tent. Hang on for just another minute, all right? Holy crap, what a gorgeous Welcome Center. This is, this is absolutely beautiful. Holy moly, look at this place. Florida, you gotta step your game up with your rest stops. All we got at our rest stops is square buildings and dudes playing grinder meetup in the palmettos. The way I even have it secured is just these, these really crappy nets that I got. So what you get for buying cheap crap on Amazon? Well, like my grandpa always said, if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. I got another one to put on there. Okay, well, it seems pretty ridiculous that I need two pieces of cargo netting to secure one tent, but here we are. They've got a freaking a whole garden out here, flowers. I mean, this place looks freaking amazing. They got a, there's a whole museum in here. Their rest stop has a museum in it. <laughs> Mississippi out here really doing the most, all right? This is, what's up? Oh, I'm all good. I appreciate the offer though, sir. Thank you. Friendly too. Man, I gotta I gotta rank this in like the top 10 rest stops I've ever been to, as opposed to Florida rest stops, which are na nationally ranked as one of the top three places to catch a sexually transmitted disease. I better skedaddle. Matt here freaking ruining the place with my crappy Goldwing Florida attitude blasting the dwarves in the parking lot. <laughs> Mississippi rest stops are uh, too nice for Shade Tree Surgeon. I'm not saying they're too nice like I I don't like them it's beautiful i'm saying they're too nice like they probably don't want me here stinking up the place they don't want they don't want a little shade tree up here bringing that florida rest stop energy with them okay hit the road jack i still don't know what that stutter is i really can't tell if it's getting worse i guess we'll just keep on trucking and find out all right six and a half hours left over halfway there. Let's do it, baby. Tell you what, uh, we're now running up on quarter after eight and I was expecting this fog to burn off, but it looks like it's getting much worse. <laughs> I don't know too much about fog in Mississippi. Is this a thing? Is this, is this gonna be all day? Okay, I am not sure exactly where I am. My phone claims to know where I am, but I don't know where I am. I don't know if I'm still in Mississippi. I don't know if I'm in Tennessee and it's telling me to go towards Missouri. <laughs> 
I put a lot of faith into this little black box right here, all right? <laughs> Maybe too much faith. Okay, now apparently we're going to misery. <laughs> Whatever you say, iPhone. What I do know is that these highways are not being kind to my no suspension having Goldwing right now. This is rough. Uh, the poor Bangkok bagger is just getting beat down like a $2 hooker right now. It's rough out here, baby. Oh, well, hey, I know where I am now. Arkansas, come on, woo! Okay, after a very sad, quiet meal at Burger King, it's, <laughs> you always want to eat at like the mom and pop places, right? You're out on the road, you want to like eat somewhere like home brewed, you know, like a place that's been there forever, but man, they just aren't around anymore. I mean, I'm sure they're here if the locals knew them, but when I'm just pulling off the interstate, it just doesn't exist. All right, 300 more miles. Can the Bangkok bagger pull it off? We got broken suspension, stuttering carburetors, plastic bouncing around everywhere. <laughs> this is just the first leg of the trip too. This is a 1300 miles without stopping. Not quite a butt burner, but definitely an iron butt. And we got another couple thousand miles after that. So, <laughs> oh, hey, there's only one way to find out, right? Yikes, dude. Damn. That's a bad day right there. I gotta imagine something like that had to have been like brake failure or something. So I maybe all my truck driver friends in the comments can tell me when a guy's off in the woods like that, I gotta imagine he was trying to stop and couldn't stop in time. So he chose to take the truck into the woods instead of hitting a car, unless it was a blowout or something like that. Well, everybody's freaking just stopping in the middle of the highway. We're about to get another wreck like that. Holy crap, man. What highway is this? Highway 40? Highway 40 in Arkansas has been a nightmare so far. Everything about this highway has been a total nightmare. Holy crap, there's another car off, off the road over there. Holy mackerel, what's going on here? <laughs> that's, just, that's so far away from the other wreck, they can't be related. Like, give me a break. What is happening? Again, I'll ask my trucker friends who probably drive Highway 40 all the time. Is this place like known for horrendous accidents or something? That scenery changed real quick. We just went from the nightmare highway, <laughs> Highway 40 to, I guess we're still on 40 West, but it just went from a total crap hole, two lane, beating my bike to death to this. Getting real pretty. We're still over uh, 180 miles out. So I expect that this Vista will get even better another 100 miles in. Never in my life seen more oversized loads than I have driving on I-40, man. It's wild. They're hauling all sorts of houses up here. All right, coming up on the, the very first overlook of the mountains. Come on, you know I gotta stop at the first one. Looks more like a truck stop than a scenic overlook, doesn't it? Ooh. Whoa. I just, something came off the bike. I don't know what that was. Hopefully nothing important. Well, I was gonna stop and look at the scenic overlook, but uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and check out the motorcycle and see what I just smashed off of it. All right, what are you missing? Um, looks like it's got everything. Looks like everything's on here. <laughs> so I said, when I hit a bump now, I gotta really watch out for potholes because every time I hit a pothole now, it's just like, freaking uh, no suspension travel whatsoever just immediately i mean there's a little bit but it immediately bottoms out well whatever came off of it is not making itself very apparent uh maybe uh, maybe there's something off of this side i think there's supposed to be like a little a belly piece over that shifter right there yeah that's what i lost huh oh well you don't need it nothing important onward as long as i didn't lose any of my chrome baby the mountain claims another part you can have it all right i gotta find somewhere to pull over here in the beauty of the mountains i gotta stop and do my youtube premiere well i don't have to do a youtube premiere but i love doing youtube premieres i love hanging out with you guys in the chat even when i'm on the road i pull over and we do the premiere together yeah <laughs> That's a lot different than it looked 100 miles ago, that's for sure. Seems like a good exit as any because it just said dry counties ahead, exit now, the wider Keller uh, beer and wine store. Although there's no way Eureka Springs is dry. And if they got a liquor store here, I'm not gonna complain, all right? Uh, you guys know I don't drink spirits, but hope maybe they might even have some good beer here. Maybe I'll be, oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> maybe I'll be drinking good beer tonight, who knows? All the ladies in here were nice enough to say I could grab me uh, six pack of ice cold Mickey's Big Mouths. Enjoy this beautiful view out here after a 18 hour long motorcycle ride. Yeah, that tastes good. And do the premiere with you guys. Let's have a beer. All right, that was a uh, 
free beer premiere. <laughs> Luckily, I've only got about 80 miles left before I get there. So let's go ahead and get somewhere a little safer before I have more than three beers on 20 hours riding a motorcycle. Time to hit the road. Uh, feeling a lot better than I did before. And no, I only had three beers. No, I'm not drunk. I'm just a lot calmer. Let's do it to it, boys. No suspension on, gra on gravel parking lots. The Goldwing is not the biggest fan, but we'll live. Oh, oh, oh baby. Oh. Turn right onto North. Light them up. Lemmy and mountains, baby. Look at that view. Oh, my God. Worth it. Every mile of that 1,300 mile, well, 1,200. I got 100 left. Every mile of it was absolutely worth it. Beer and snacks acquired, baby. We in the home stretch, all right? It's off highway from here on out. It's going to be nice. A little bit of problems with my GoPro, my battery adapter. We'll see if it lasts all the way up to Eureka Springs, but if it doesn't, I'll tell you what, still gonna enjoy the hell out of this ride. I'll tell you, there's just something so exciting about climbing these mountain roads, a sense of anticipation where you're going up and up and up. Well, it's exciting for me because I can make just about anything exciting. I tell you guys, if it seems like I'm making things seem exciting, that's because they are exciting for me. And you can make anything exciting, even if it's boring, usually with a liberal application of beer. I say exciting, but you know, how exciting can you get on a 34-year-old gold wing with no suspension in the mountain roads? <laughs> We're about to find out. 1,300 miles and it was worth every mile just to have this view on this old piece of crap, $1,500 gold wing, man. <laughs> worth it. Oh my God, how could it get any better? I'm sure it does, I'm sure it does. <laughs> I always say that, I get right into the foothills and I just immediately like, how could it get any better than this? 70 miles of this. <sighs> Even at the end of 1,300 miles, it feels good. You would think that the last 50 miles suck, that you're like, you don't want to do them, your butt hurts, but the, this last one where we got 70 miles left and it's all this, I love it, even on top of 1,300 miles before it. <laughs> Once again, I'll say, could it get any better? Could it get any better? <laughs> it keeps getting better. I love it. Be amazed, you know, it's a choice. You can choose to be amazed at something. You don't, you don't have to be like, I've seen better or I could do better. You can choose to be amazed by the wonder of nature every single time you see it. And guess what? I've never not chosen to be amazed by the wonder of nature and it feels pretty good. Very crooked and steep. Come on, baby, we love it. Climb and climb. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, how much this golden actually wants to climb. That stutter in the carburetor becomes real pronounced once you ask it to go uphill. <laughs> Well, I could be doing this on the crappiest bike ever. I'm doing it on a pretty crappy bike and I'd still have a smile plastered across my face. $1,500, 34 year old plastic touring bike with no suspension front or rear. And I'm still having a good time. What's your excuse? Even with no suspension, it's a damn sight better than the Raspberry Buffet. <laughs> I don't know how much they change on the frame geometry between those two bikes, but man, the GL 1500s just turn in so much better than the 1200s do. Oh, baby, come on. Could it get, once again, could it get any better? Ah, I love it. Oh, scraping parts on the GL 1500, which ain't hard. <laughs> Trust me, it's not hard. That's actually the most dangerous part about it in the, these mountain roads like that is that it scrapes parts so early that it has way more lean than it has room for. With no suspension on the front, the front end on this thing doesn't track worth a damn. It is all over the place. Still fun. Hey, you know what? Maybe riding a sketchier bike with a front end that's not tracking and suspension that's got no travel or rebound, maybe that's actually more safe because you're not tempted to push it hard at all. Come on, worth every damn mile, baby. <laughs> Uh, really wants a downshift for those hills, don't it? Hey, it's called the pig trail. <laughs> Makes sense we got this big old pig on it, huh? A wonder around every corner. God, I could never get tired of this. Very crooked and steep. <laughs> Sounds like a couple girls I know from Ybor City. <laughs> yeah, you ain't leaning over very far with those highway pegs on this thing. 
<laughs> hey, like I said, you, you can't get yourself into too much trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't get yourself in too much trouble with those carburetors either. This poor, this poor Bangkok bagger is struggling. Come on, you can do it. You still, you still got how many? Still got 61 miles of this. You can do it. My ears keep popping. I love it. Can you? Can, can you? We're full. We're full throttle, baby. Come on. <laughs> Uh, Pike's peak contender this motorcycle is not. <laughs> Come on, baby, you can do it. I feel like it'll do a lot better going downhill, okay? It just needs the momentum, that's all. Get a little momentum going and the old Bangkok bagger does just fine, baby. Hey, that's why they give us this downhill and the uphill afterwards. The FXR needed the same treatment, don't hate. Like a freaking postcard this place is. Come on, baby, why didn't nobody tell me about this? Actually, they did. A bunch of YouTubers have been here, Bike and Bird's been here, Ride to Food's been here, like, uh, of course, the Henri one has been here, uh, Adam Sandoval, like, <laughs> that's why we're here. Uh, everybody told me about this place, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Everyone said, Eureka Springs, the pig trail, this is the place to be, so, I'm going to Adam Sandoval's K-River camp out, the Southern American camp out. Dude, I'm gonna stop here on the way. I mean, it wasn't really on the way, but when it comes to something like this, I made it on the way. Oh, baby. <laughs> out here bombing it on the side-by-side. -side. I freaking love it, man. I found that it seems like, I don't know what's up with these carburetors, or maybe it's just the elevation or something. There's always been kind of a problem with them. I found if you keep it a uh, Right at, right at or above 4,000 RPM, 3,500 and up, it seems to do all right, but you start dipping below that and it is not a happy camper. It stresses me out to keep the engine singing that high, but I literally had it at almost 4,000 RPMs for almost 24 hours just previous to this, so obviously it can do it. Oh my God. Oh, we don't deserve such wonder. I have to pull over. I must appreciate this. Please don't fall over, bike. Wouldn't that be something? It's just like, let me let me make sure that doesn't happen, actually. It's like, make it all the way up here on this piece of crap bike, everything breaking on it, then drop it right here and like, break off the freaking clutch lever or something. That would be hilarious. Well, I mean, hilarious is a word. <sighs> wow. 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 Very nature. Much majestic. All right, let's go drink beer. So at this point, I have done quite a few iron butts. <laughs> I mean, I think this will be my fourth iron butt. And uh, it's kind of weird. I got to ask myself why I do these things. You know, why do I, why do, I do them? Because I've never actually documented one. So this will be my fourth undocumented iron butt. Like I don't have any reward for it. No piece of paper saying I did it. But that's not out of the ordinary for me. I never even collected my silver play button for hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Like I just never requested it. Now, my last season racing, I also finished fourth place overall. There was a trophy for that too, which I also never bothered to go pick up and they eventually threw in the trash. Now, a lot of people might say that's because I hate trophies and you know, it's just about, about doing the thing and the trophy doesn't matter. And I, I don't know, can't it be both things? Because I don't hate trophies. I think trophies are fine. And I think that people who enjoy their trophies, I'm not taking anything away from you guys. Like enjoy your trophy. Like why would, why would I take that away? Why, is, why would I say trophies are stupid? Enjoy the hell out of your trophy, man. If you get a silver play button, enjoy the hell out of it. If you finish fourth place, you get a participation trophy like I did, well, enjoy it. You know, I just like, I don't have anything against them. I just wouldn't walk across the street to pick one up, if that makes sense. If it takes anything more from me other than somebody putting it in my hand, any more effort than that, I'm not gonna do it because I just don't care. It's not that I don't think trophies are fine. Of course trophies are fine. It's just that I personally don't give a damn. You know why I do the iron butts? It's not so I can get a little piece of paper that says I did an, I rode a thousand miles in under 24 hours. If you want to do that, that's fine. Like I'm not stopping you. Do, do your thing. The whole reason I started doing this is because it made the United States a smaller place for me. I did it out of necessity. I wanted to know if I could do it and if I could do it regularly because it opens up so many places to me because I work for a living. So I got to be back to work, but I want to go to a lot of places and now I'm here. And I'm here experiencing these mountains and experiencing this road 
because I'm able to ride a thousand miles or in this case 1300 miles without stopping in about 18 to 20 hours. That feels really good. It makes the world a much smaller place for me and it allows me to do all these things that multiple times a year that I otherwise would only maybe to get to do if I'm lucky once a year. You know, people don't get all this vacation time. I don't get it either, you know? I take a few days off to go do something and that's a big deal. I have to be able to crush those miles in order to get to, especially living in Florida, in order to get to the places I want to go. I have to do this. Like, I don't need a piece of paper saying I did it. I, why would I care about that? That's not why I'm doing it. Now, if that's why you're doing it, that's fine. Fine, just knock yourself out. My way, the reason I am doing it is not any better or any worse for the reasons that anybody else is doing it. They are just my reasons, that is all. Let me tell you what, that goes for everything. Nothing I do is better or worse than anybody else does. It's just the stuff that I do, man. Just like I always say, you can have all this fun out here on a $1,500 motorcycle, on this old piece of crap gold wing half falling apart. You can have just as much fun on a $40,000 GS as you do on this thing. Well, the same also holds true and opposite. It's not like you have more fun on the gold wing than you would on a very expensive sport touring bike out here. Like, if you have the money to afford an expensive sport touring bike like get one they're awesome and they're gonna make this whole experience really really cool I, i'm just saying you don't have to have that that doesn't make it not nice i don't know i don't like getting to that whole like dick measuring competition of who does it for the right reasons and who's the who's the realist and who's all this bulk like don't give me that crap man i'm just trying to have a good time so don't put words in my mouth okay <laughs> we're just out here having fun on two wheels and i don't care what those two those two wheels cost a hundred grand or a hundred bucks we're having the same fun that doesn't make the hundred thousand dollars less fun than a hundred bucks okay <laughs> just different strokes for different folks, man. The only thing I've ever wanted to show with these cheap bikes is that anybody can do it. I mean, not anybody. You still have to have like 1,500 bucks, two grand. Uh, so that's not anybody. But I, all I ever wanted to show was like, hey, you don't have to be rich to do this. You don't have to have a ton of money. You don't even have, if you can do the thousand miles without stopping, you don't even have to have a ton of time off you can just ride out here on a weekend come experience this and go back home all i'm trying to do with this is eliminate excuses and not just eliminate excuses for other people this isn't just for the greater good of motorcycles and youtube and all that although i do want to see more people riding because i'm very passionate about motorcycles i'm mainly doing this for me i'm making sure that i can eliminate my own excuses because i was that guy i am the guy saying like oh i can't because i don't have enough time or i can't because i don't have have enough money or I can I can I can I can I can't bull crap I can here I this is proof here I am I can here I am right now freaking 1300 miles away from home on a motorcycle that I that barely runs I don't know if this motorcycle is gonna make it back I've got no idea yet here I am with a smile just cracking my face in half whoop yes I can do it no excuses baby here we are <laughs> A wonder around every corner. Here we are, baby. Feels good. This is exactly what happened to me. All those other people came out here and did videos on the Pig Trail and on Eureka Springs, and I was just like, how can I sit here knowing this place exists and not come here? Next time on Dragon Ball Z. What's up, weirdos? Um. What's up, weirdos? She Tree Surgeon here. Get ready for another vlog with her two wheels. We're gonna go to every single bar, drink all the beers, curse like sailors, and have a great time. All right, let's go to a bar. We just got done spending the night in the Santa Fe room, also known as Shane Tree Surgeon's Fuck Shack. Who will emerge victorious? Can I make Jess crash her brand new bike? Pretty good for views. News to her, guess what? Nobody can tell me shit. I can't believe they don't let you get drunk out here. It looks like a kind of place I would go to smoke weed when I was in middle school. Scratchy dicks, itchy venereal disease tavern, crab legs half off on Wednesdays, pink dick dolphin half mask, cocks hard, <laughs> cafe, kid friendly. Our waiter managed to convince Jess that it was haunted. Apparently she'll believe anything. The angry pussy, unkempt vagina, rowdy beaver. Delicious, 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 delicious. That looks amazing.